This is Manor Lords, not to be confused with Banner Lord, a highly anticipated strategy game featuring in-depth city building, large-scale medieval battles, and complex economic and social simulations. In Manor Lords, you play as a mayor appointed by the king to try and establish a bustling town in one of the regions of the map, and eventually overthrow the illegitimate baron that is occupying several lands. You will have to manage your population's needs and wants, make sure they have a place to live, provide job opportunities, access to food and water, grow industry, trade, build and manage a central marketplace and bolster your city's defenses to repel bandit attacks targeting your town. But what if I told you there is a very simple way to break the game's economy, giving you tens of thousands of silver and allowing your town to thrive by buying off literally anything you need and more. You can achieve this by becoming a lord of war and turning your town into a military industrial complex, constantly pumping out weapons. And we won't be making just any weapons, we'll be specifically producing war bows. Why war bows? Because other weapons are complex to make, you'd have to get a mining operation going and then smelting off those minerals and then turning them into tools, investing several perks into weapon and armor making and then getting blacksmiths to make the weapons in a lengthy procedure. War bows on the other hand, Hand, do not require any perk points and are made out of wood, the second most common element in Manor Lords after bandits. Warbows literally grow on trees, making them the easiest weapon to mass manufacture. So today, I will be showing you how to completely break Manor Lords by becoming a mass ranged weapons dealer. Our story begins in the land of Nosolo, which translates to, we are all gonna make it bros populated by the homeless population of downtown LA. Now contrary to popular belief, the homeless are not immortal and do require food to survive, which is why I'm going to build a hunter's lodge to get these people some meat. One problem though, I ended up hiring a magician who transformed all the village's hammers into arrows. I put the rest of the villagers on lumberjack duty cause we are gonna need a lot of wood to make the industrial revolution happen. Oh, is this an email from the tyrannical mayor on the map? Just like all my other problems, I'll proceed to ignore it. The one thing I can't ignore though is the hustle culture going on in my village right now, with the mage hunter guy trying to set up a meat and hides dropshipping business before bro even has a house. With a granary and a storehouse built, we next solved an issue not even the United States could solve. Homelessness, putting us at the first village level. Now it's time to make these villagers happy in order to grow the village big and strong just like my average subscriber. And to do that, let me give you a little hack. By building a single chicken coop for 25 silver, you can use facts and logic to gaslight your villagers into believing that technically, because we have a single egg circulating in the market, we technically have food variety putting our global happiness over 50% and allowing the village to grow. Solving homelessness and making people happy leveled us up to small village. And to celebrate that, I drafted every single male over the age of 7 to form the village militia. With the availability of affordable housing, a strong diet of meat and eggs, our village was looking like a great suburbs area to move into. And soon families started moving in. As long as we keep this up, we're gonna build a strong boat industry. Now for phase 2 of our operation. In addition to manpower, we also need access to level 2 houses, because those are the ones that allow you to make a Fletcher. Think of it as an underground meth lab, just less fun. And to get to level 2 houses, we are missing a well, which we easily built. Stay hydrated boys. We also need a church, which is gonna require some materials. Thankfully, we have been working on making planks and sawmills, so we already have the resources to build it. We are also missing a stable Stay clothing supply, and in order to fulfill that, we are gonna build a tannery, which transforms hides into leather, which can then be supplied to the houses for them to do as they please with. Remember our hunter's dropshipping business? He drops off the leather, and his wife ships it. And would you look at that, a new family. Give them a welcome hug and shove them straight into the leather sweatshop. The heist of the century! A group of bandits has successfully stolen one singular egg from my... If these guys can sustain themselves on one single egg, I'd be happy to give it to them. Empty the compartments of your pantaloons. For what purpose? And discard But that one egg is single-handedly driving our food economy, so this is war. Church built. Clothing available, water accessed, knuckles cracked, oh yeah, 
it's time to build level 2 houses and condemn a few families to an eternity of being trapped in their basement making war bows. The village is also pretty self-sustaining at this point, so we'll just keep expanding and growing it more and more. 11 meat stolen? What the fuck? That's like our whole entire GDP. Nah, man, these people need to be stopped. We are now only surviving on three boiled eggs. Times are rough, bros. Let's build a trading post so that our operation is all ready to go. And boom, the Fletcher is up and running. I'm smelling fat stacks incoming. In the meanwhile, we keep growing exponentially. The supply chain can never stop. If you are hitting your housing limit, you're playing the game wrong. With the perk point that we got earlier, we're gonna go into trade logistics. That way, all trade routes are only 25 silver to establish, giving us the possibility of establishing a war bows route. And just like that, we have become the Lord of War. We hired the sleaziest salesman I could find, aka the newest family to join. And we get to selling. Not much changes after this other than I start doubting that the people in charge of the granary are in cahoots with the bandits seeing how much they keep stealing our food. During winter nonetheless. I imagine the people in charge of the granary as the prison warden from that one key and PL sketch. Hey man, you gotta let me out of here. Oh, okay. We also leveled up the village once again and unlocked the entire script to the B movie. Hey, we're profitable! We're profitable! We made our first sale! Now it's time to make a money channel and spam it with the courses on how to become a millionaire at 16 by selling medieval weaponry. Now with our newfound wealth, the next move is to show our appreciation to our heroes and double down on chicken poops. We're gonna build an empire of war bows and eggs. For fuck's sake, stop! The bandits saw how overpowered our egg no strategy is life. and decided to declare war to claim it all for themselves. But they did give us one year warning for some reason so we do have some time to prepare. Yo how the fuck am I getting a homelessness debuff with all these houses bruh? We already hit late stage capitalism and the workers can't afford the houses they built themselves? What the hell 15 eggs? Oh, bro, bro. Okay my blood pressure I need to stop. I will annihilate these bandits. We'll throw in some goats into the mix to support the clothing line and everything seems to be in order. We have a high population growth thanks to our really high approval. The economy is stable, we are generating silver and families are joining really fast. Which is better than what New York could say for itself. Knowing that the bandits who are inevitably coming for us are practically superhuman thanks to the radioactive eggs they've been stealing from us. It won't hurt to use some of these war bows for our own army. We keep building affordable housing for people to join in and investing heavily into small vegetable farms and chicken coops to sustain the growing population. I cannot imagine what the national dish for this village looks like. The important part is just never stop expanding boys. Finally, the promised day has arrived. The people who have been stealing our eggs for the last two years have decided to show up and take it all. Turns out it's just a bunch of angry British football hooligans. One small issue with their plan to steal all of our eggs was that their intel was wrong and we had a bit more troops than they thought. You see, for the past few months, our male population has grown significantly, giving us way more than enough troops to repel the bandit attack. We've also been using the silver we got from selling the war bows to import spears and shields for a full squad of spearmen to hold the front. We have also weaponized our best hunters with the same war bows our village has grown famous for. The bandits never knew what hit them. Because my boys and the bandits had a gentleman agreement to take the fight into the middle of our lumberjack tree growing operation. Spear tips pierced flesh. Clubs clashed against shields and arrows soared high in the sky. The only thing that didn't happen that day is that no eggs were stolen. Because before long, our boys successfully broke the bandits morale. And the remaining ones fled with their heads between their legs, never to be seen again. In our valiant defense, two people lost their lives. But it is a sacrifice I am willing to make to keep our chickens safe. To celebrate this victory and to celebrate the effort of my people and the sacrifices of those two guys, I'm gonna force the villagers to build me a manor. You know, as a show of respect and a show of appreciation for all my good hard work. We'll also build a second trade post and import some horses that we'll use to transport sold items to really go heavily into trading. And we'll heavily expand our lumberjack operations with forester huts, more logging camps and more. 
The housing efforts are always non-stop to keep growing the village, I don't have to remind you of that. Before long, we hit another village level up, and this time, we unlock the perk that gives us much better deals on imports. This will make it so much easier for our village to import commodities and food to combat the fact that we have no farming fields. With all these additions, we are now starting to make some serious money, which will keep reinvesting into vegetable farms, chicken coops, and goat farms, and also keep importing commodities to keep growing. I cannot imagine that all this ale is coming in cold. We are importing it from like the other side of the world, man. We have so many warbows at this point that if we make an archer regiment, it immediately fills up. Oh no, a famine! Too bad, that's a problem for people with no money, which we are not. Import some goddamn bread, homie. Even while buying the most expensive delicacies that the market can offer, as well as the most renowned clothing brands of medieval Europe, we are still making an absurd amount of money. This is the power of instigating political disorder in other realms, then arming both sides with locally produced war bows. It is now time to take our village to the next level and become an actual town. And of course, a big town is nothing without an extravagant church. Look at this beauty right here. What? The remaining survivors of the first attack on our town have traveled around bandit camps and spread word about our legendary eggs, so they rallied up several groups of bandits and came to attack? But what they didn't know is, we were now a military industrial complex disguised as a medieval town. Wanna see the world's longest conga line? Just disband your militia to go back to do their jobs after a big fight. At the end of the day, we ended up with a big productive town thanks to the hard work of our villagers, stronger economy than the entirety of Eastern Europe, a bigger population than the entire state of Missouri, slightly more food reserves than what yo mama has in her pantry, a bustling market, amazing architecture, and a big strong army that just defeated the biggest wave of bandits the game can send against you. It's clear that turning my town into a military industrial complex was the right move to make it a beacon of civil development. We have reached the peak of what the game has to offer. There's only one last thing to cement our position as a global superpower, and you all know what it is. Establishing the IRS. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please do leave a like and a comment to support the channel. Also, I hope you're excited for a big Banner Road project I got coming soon. It's sort of a movie kind of video, and it's gonna take a bit of time to come out. In the meantime, there's a lot of cool videos coming, so watch out for those. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Much love. Bye bye